Hi there, Yechiel Melech HaMashiach. Welcome, people. I want to talk about Neture Karta, the fringe group that some people think are lost or some people think are crazy. These are usually Jews from European descent who hate and will do anything in their power to delegitimize the existence of the Zionist government. Now, I want to talk about why these people are not crazy and I want to talk about why the Zion, Zionist government is a little bit not legitimate and why I can say this even though I'm Orthodox religious Jew and I'm not part of their group and I'm also not a radical person and I'm not looking for anything radical. Um, first of all, any smart person, uh, anyone that knows history, knows that you have to know the entire story before you judge someone. Every person's experience in the world is based on the brainwashing or what we call education that you got. If you went to a certain school for seven, eight years and they taught you to be a communist, you're a communist today. Wow! If you were in a school for, for the first 20 years of your life and you were taught to be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, so that's what you have. That's the version that you set out to the world with. That's the set of tools. Does it mean it's right? Does it mean it's wrong? Uh, you know, there's billions of people that don't agree with you. There's billions of people that do agree with you. There's billions of people that don't even know what you're talking about and they live and die and everything's fine. You know, uh, there's obviously, life is a learning experience. And the more you learn, the more cultures you're, you're aware of, the more history, the more religion you're aware of. Not only does it not take away from who you are and your stuff, it actually broadens your picture and it helps you Go back to your source and use it in the correct way. So, um, going to the Notoria Carta, let's talk about them for a minute, right? So, Notoria Carta, um, in my opinion, or what I've gathered from all the information, is something like this. I'm going to say it in a story. The Jewish people are in Germany. They're, they've been there for five, six, seven generations. This is before the Holocaust. And they've been there for five, six, seven generations, and Jewish people are very conservative. The religion doesn't let them marry out. It makes them focus and be very, very honest. So they're involved in business. That's pr pretty much the only thing they're allowed to do in, in Judaism, is to be an honest person and a hard-working person. So if they're honest, so everyone's doing business with them, and that's the only thing they're doing. They're not in the club. They're not gambling. They're not allowed to gamble. They're not allowed to get drunk with non-Jews. They're not allowed to party, so they're not wasting their money. They're just spending, and, and their family is very important to them, so they're building very strong communities and very strong structures. After six generations in Europe, the Jewish people pretty much had a lot of money, and that's because the non-Jewish population is busy killing each other, and the Jewish people have quarrels, and they scream, and they're like the Chinese. They get into very big arguments, but they'll never kill someone else. Um, because of an argument, because life is the most valuable thing in Judaism. So no one's getting killed, there's no death rate, family structures are building. It's a very, very powerful force, and they're just collecting a lot of money, they're making a lot of money. Now from the side, it's like, oh my God, look at these Jews, they're hoarding all the money. They're not hoarding all the money. It's just that when Ivan and, I, and, and, and uh, Ivan and all the other Peter are busy in the bar drinking away their sorrows and, and, and killing each other when they owe each other money, um, the Jewish people are living, and also, obviously, the Bible's commandments, they actually fulfill them, so they're washing their hands, so the Black Plague, everyone's dying besides the Jews, because the Jews are washing their hands before they eat, they're washing their hands when they go to the bathroom, they wash their hands in the morning, so they're washing their hands be before and after they have relationships, so they're doing all this stuff anyway, because the Bible says so, so they're not dying in the Black Plague, they're not... They, so they look like these crazy people, but it's all because they're people of the book, and they read the book, and they believe in God, and they're doing all that. So then it becomes a, 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 a point, a pinnacle in the Jewish community, the Jewish community, the religious and non-religious together. They're like, look, we own Germany. We have all, we have, we have the majority of the money, and uh, we have the majority of the power. What do we do now? Do we do we invest it here? Because it was becoming clearer and clearer that there's a lot of jealousy that the Jewish people collected all this money. Now the Jewish people are like, what do we do? 
So the, the, the Orthodox people are like, well, let's continue building. Let's continue opening more study halls. Let's get the government off our backs. Let's, uh, let's expand. Let's go out of the ghetto. Let's try to teach the word and try to, you know, recruit, recruit, explain to the other people. Let's invest in, in spreading the word of Judaism. Now, the not, that's the Orthodox people. They're like, because Mashiach, Messiah, the Redeemer of the Jewish people, he can come to Varsha, to Germany, to Warsaw, and he can redeem us from here. That's his job. His job is to come save us from every corner of the world so we can wait for him here. Now, the Rothschild and the, and the Haskalah movement, which is today... You know the reform, the conservative. They're not so religious, and maybe even atheistic. You know, people. They're like, no, we're gonna take our money and our power, and we're gonna buy land in Israel, and we're gonna start a new government, a new system of slavery, basically, um, in Israel, only with Jews. We'll try that model. And the religious people are like, look, but it doesn't line up with the law. This thing that's been keeping us alive for so long doesn't line up. The law doesn't say that we need to move to Israel. It just says that Mashiach has to come. Because in the Jewish law, with regards to Mashiach, it says, Minui Melech, Kaidim Lebinin Beis Abchira. Crowning a king comes before you build a temple. So the temple is built in Israel. And the crowning of the king comes before you build the temple. So the Jewish religious people were assuming that what you need to do is, you need to build you need to build a temple only after the King Messiah is revealed. And the King Messiah hasn't been revealed, so there's no need to run after the temple. Also, we also had the fake Messiah, Shaftai Tzvi, and all kinds of other fellows. So the Orthodox community wasn't looking for any crazy action at this point. Now, uh, Hitler comes into power. The, the Germans are more and more and more despising uh, their situation. And Hitler says, I'm going to kill, I'm going to throw all the Jews out of Germany. So then we're going to restart the competition, you know, because there's no legal way to take what they have, because what they have, they, they, it's theirs. There's no, there's no other way to look at it. And obviously there were many Jews that forgot completely about their mission and, uh, and, and what they stand for and what brought them all the success. And they started to integrate with the Germans, marry them and all that. And the Germans were very, very happy to take them in, not because they loved them, but because they wanted their money. And they want, and you can see many stories in, in Nazi Germany when the Germans come to take and say, "Are there any Jews in this house?" And they say, "Yeah, that my husband's a Jew," and they were married for twenty, thirty, forty years. I mean, there was a lot of issues. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to play into the psychology of every little story, but this is a true, this is a true account. You can take it however you want. It doesn't mean anything. It can be, you know, maybe she was scared that they're going to kill her too, and she's like, you know, if they're going to take him. And let them take him and not at least I, I continue to live. I mean, I'm not going to risk myself. I don't know what was going through their heads. You know, you're married to someone for 40 years. Maybe he thought, maybe it's a man-woman thing. I have no idea. I really have no clue. But anyway. So the notorious character, who are they? They're the ultra-Orthodox Jews that did not move to Palestine. Because you see, right before World War II, a huge surge of non-religious German or European Jews moving to Israel. Right after that, the Holocaust. Boom. And who are the bulk from within the Jewish community? Who's the bulk of the people that end up in the gas chambers? Religious Orthodox Jews. Those are the Jews that end up in the gas chambers. And those are the ones you see in the picture. He's wrapping his tefillin. He's praying. Or you see them all herded into the... You see them cutting their beards. Those are the Jews who are left. Those are the museums. Those are the native Indians, you know? Those are the ones who get the wrath. Now, the Natura Karta are the grandchildren of those people. The children and the grandchildren of those religious Jews. Now, what happened was, right as the whole thing was starting to erupt, Hitler needed more votes in the parliament in Germany or whatever. So he goes to the Zionist movement, which was basically the rich secular Jews had a foot in politics. And so he wanted their vote. And there was a double agent that connected them. And he said to Hitler, You're, you want to get the Jews out of Germany. These people want to take the Jews to Israel. Why don't you collab? Because at that time, all the nations of the world were making a ban on German goods. They were not letting... They were doing like what what is what America was doing to Iran, you know. Nobody does business with them. They're too radical. They're too this. 
So everybody was hearing all the anti-Semitism uh, from Germany, and everyone was making a ban. So now the Zionists said, so so Hitler said, well, we'll, we'll make a deal. Basically, the deal that they made was, you, you're going to say that, no, the Jews that are against Hitler, they're the, 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 the fraction, nut job, religious Jews. Because you see the enlightened Jews, the Zionist Jews, they're, they're all... They're they're cool with Hitler. They understand the psychology. You know, they understand the the genetic uh, you know New Age BS and and all that stuff. So so uh, let's let's fringe that. You know, and then uh, and 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 uh, as payment for this service, that basically they're going to give this deception that there are some Jews that agree with Hitler or understand his mind. Um, in return, Hitler's going to return the favor and give them uh, basically free access to take all their uh, banks and all their money and their printing machines and the Rothschild, uh, you know, hoard and, and just bring it all to Palestine and to develop the state. So much so that early historians agree that without Hitler, the Zionist state would never exist. So what we're talking about here is... A lot of times, the Zionists, they hated, they despised the religious people so much that they gave the command to kill the Orthodox Jews. And you see it a lot of times, you had a half a million Hungarian Jews, and the Germans were like, we just want you know someone to buy them for a dollar apiece, shipping and handling, because we're going to lose the war anyway. That was the last, you know, that last batch, and they realized that this is bullshit, you know. This is this whole plan of taking over the world. It's not working, and 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 the Jews are just normal people, and you know all all the all the brainwashing was starting to wear out. And the Jews in Israel, the Zionist, Reform, Conservative, they were like, we don't want to litter the streets of New York and Tel Aviv with all these bearded. Uh, Jews with the gefilte fish in their beard. We don't. We don't need that. You know, it's going to ruin the Zionist dream of secularism. And now we know what that looks like. Uh, yeah, sure. A bunch of hookers and, and 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 people that don't value their life and they don't value their body and they don't value their soul, and they have tattoos of a of a, of, a, of, a, of a pineapple on their on their shoulder and, and and a peach and an orange on their knees. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that's the great Zionist dream. Dumb people that have no history, that have no direction in life. Great. <sighs> you know, obviously, if you learn history, you know what divide and conquer is. And if you don't, you should go research it right now, because for, for the safety of mankind, it's important that every person understand the tactics of divide and conquer. Men, women, black, black, white, religious against un, you know, non-religious. This Orthodox group against that Orthodox group. That's the way they control us by keeping the hate fueling and even citizen against government because the government is just a, a dumb tool, a blunt tool. The government is just the hammer. What you need to look for is the hand that's holding the hammer. And, and, and keep convincing and talking up to the hammer and telling him you don't need to be the hammer because just not like a hammer that's just a tool. And the police are used as a tool. But hopefully, if we speak to them and remind them, you know, you're people. You're people just like us. You're not a tool. You're being used as a tool. But you aren't a tool. You can use your head. You're not a tool. I mean, you give, an, uh, you give a person enough money, he, might, he starts to think that he's a tool. Or he starts to say, wow, this life is so amazing. I must be doing something right. No, not necessarily. The Natura Carta are the people that heard the Zionist Jews telling the Nazis to kill them instead of letting them go. And the Germans reluctantly fulfilling their orders. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking to you about. So when you see Notoria Carta and you say, Oh, look at these Jew look at these Jews stabbing their fellow brothers in the back. No, the Lubavitch Rebbe spoke to prime ministers. They actually, <laughs> they were at the Rebbe's feet. They, they were at the Lubavitch, the, the Jewish leader's feet, thanking him for a moment of his time. And the Rebbe would close the door and talk to them for hours. And they would walk away humbled 
and they would talk about it to all their friends and be like, oh my God, you know, the Rebbe spoke to me, the Jewish leader spoke to me, and the Rebbe would give them advice and sometimes rebuke them for different things that they were doing. The Rebbe never spoke against Nitori Karta. And the reason the Rebbe never spoke against Nitori Karta is because the Rebbe was alive in the Holocaust. The Rebbe knew exactly what they were talking about. It doesn't mean that that's the whole picture. But to think that they're lost, to think that they're stupid, to think that what they represent is not true, is missing a huge part of secret hidden history that you won't learn in the public schools. And the only thing I can say is that I'm assuming that the early Zionists, the real Zionists, the ones that hated the re religious Jews, don't exist anymore. They're a species that went extinct because that's what the Rebbe says. The Rebbe says that those real Zionists don't really exist anymore. The ones that still are bitter about those arguments that they had back in Europe before the war. The war kind of made it very, very clear, whether you're religious or not, that Hitler and the enemies of the Jewish people don't care if you're religious. They're going to kill you all. If they come for you, they come for all. So that kind of taught us a few things, whether you're religious or not. But the point is that they represent a special part of history. And the legitimacy of the Zionist state hangs on a balance every single day. And it's good that it does, because they always need to remember. If they're going to claim that they have a Medina Yehudit, a Jewish state, and that their slogan is Liot Chofshi Baratzenu, to be free in our land, they have to live up to that promise, and they have to live up to that demand. And if they don't, they lose all legitimacy. And then they're just like everybody else, just like Napoleon, and just like other king, kings and generals that killed and slaughtered for no reason whatsoever. So if they want to claim legitimacy in the land of Israel, it's because of those European Jews that were stuck in the ovens, the ones who survived, the ones who made it here, and the ones who came back to their promised land. Those are the Jews who paid the price, and those are the Jews who are here in Israel that need to get paid and reap the benefits of the promised land. Those are the ones who stay true to the dream in the fire and in the water. And of course, hopefully, we'll stay, you know, friends. But you can't be scared of your history. And to say that the Notura Carta are wild, maybe, yeah, the, 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 their, their front players are wild. And the way they're represented today could be, you know, just the, the remains of this ideology of this secret information but you know uh, I read full series you know books this thick each of uh, survivors of World War two and uh, there's some crazy stuff there and the most the most painful things to hear when I'm reading those books is to see the amount of Jewish people Friedman Shapiro these names that you hear today in the Jewish world these names are the same names you hear of individuals who helped the Nazis and who assisted the Nazis in killing their father, their mother, their brothers, their sisters. Many of them, many of them were also non-religious. The Haskalah movement, there was a very big consensus. There was a very, even in America, it was debated, this whole concept of ethnic cleansing and, 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 and if someone's born stupid is it worth keeping them alive and all kinds of playing God in all these kinds of ways until today there are some stupid scientists that speak about it and they say oh well it's so hard to talk about you know you know you know people that are smarter and stupider because the Germans gave it a bad rap yeah, you know what, the Germans did give it a bad rap. And God should be the only one, if God exists, God should be the only one to choose life and death. We're all equal under God. We're all equal. Ah, well, we're not. We, I have a God. I'm smarter than you. I, I learned in university. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. The world is a, is, is a circle. If you think you're smarter than someone, you might have killed him because he's stupid. But the next day, he's strong enough. He could have saved your life when you fell into that lake by mistake. Oh, we don't make mistakes. Oh, yes, you do. I mean, you know what? I'm not, I'm not even going to get into this right now. But the point is, 
that back in the day, this whole picking who should live and who should die, looking at people like a bunch of tomatoes, and saying, oh, the big ones and the, and, and the rotten small ones should all be thrown out. We're just going to keep the medium-sized ones that can fit in the packaging. So that kind of thinking, but with human beings, was very, very popular in the world. And the Zionist and the conservative reform, Haskalah movement, they all fell for that. And when they told them, oh, there's a half a million Orthodox Jews, they said, yeah, you can kill them. Today, I think that the, or, the Jewish community at large um, is is cohesive in its concept of the value of life. I mean, besides certain places in the government where you still see them treating people like shit. That's always a thing. Even in the Israeli government, you see them, the, the, the young soldiers that are drafted, which the draft doesn't have to exist in Israel. It's some old crap that's outdated. I mean, we don't need that anymore. That's just, that was in order to conquer Israel. We don't need the draft anymore. But, I mean, the soldiers that are going to 1718, they're treated like such garbage in the military here in Israel that it's just, it's it's saddening to see the, the true colors of the government, you know, how they treat the kids like trash. And uh, the way uh, tickets are handed out, you know, I got a ticket for not having a license to drive a bike, a thousand shekel. Wow. You know, so, and, and there's no, you can't really, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just, there's equality when it's one citizen against another or when it's one group in the government against another group in the government. But when it's the citizen against the government, there's not, it's the law, it's the law. You, you come up against this wall of dumb people that it's the law, it's the law, you need to have a license to drive a bike. It's the law. I have three kids. You're not taking money out of my pocket. You're taking money out of my kids, my wife. I'm a, I'm a, I slept on benches. I ate sandwiches and bottles of water. I, I don't care. But I have kids. I have a wife. They're, they're, you know, they're a little cranky and they, they want to have a good life. Give me a thousand shekel. My rent is... I mean, a thousand shekel is a lot of money. Oh, and if you don't pay it, then we add and add and add and add. And if you still don't pay it after a couple of years, we send some bullies into your house. They're going to pick shit up, your fridge, your freezer, your your, your 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 things, and we'll sell it on some shitty market for for 5% of the price. We'll steal your shit, or we'll steal your bank account. We'll, we'll freeze your bank account. Your bank account belongs to the government. So here in Israel, the government still treats people like crap. And there's, a, you know, the notorious character rightfully put two and two together. Maybe the government, the Zionist government, that doesn't care about human life and doesn't care about human dignity, they're the same ones who killed our grandparents in the freaking Holocaust. Why should we give these people legitimacy in the state of Israel if, our di if the dying breath of our forefathers was never trust these people because they're going to kill you at a certain point? So that's the story of Matura Karta. Does anybody think they're smart right now? Let me let, let me know in the comments. Oh, Natura Karto, they're shaking hands with Ahmadinejad. You know what? Ahmadinejad believes in God more than Bibi Netanyahu. Maybe. Ahmadinejad, I don't think, is a lying, scheming, conniving politician like Bibi Netanyahu is. Bibi Netanyahu doesn't even know how to let go of a chair. If you play musical chairs with Bibi Netanyahu, he will glue the chair to his ass. <laughs> that's that's Bibi Netanyahu. So so he, so so I think that maybe Ahmadinejad would be you know they said Ahmadinejad was voted in because he drove a, a crappy car, dressed very simple, you know. He, Ahmadinejad does disrespects the Zionist government because they don't believe in God, not because he hates Jews. Don't get it twisted. The Arabs don't hate the Jews. They hate the Western crap. They hate the Zionist atheistic crap. And they hate when they see a Jew in Israel that's trying to be more Gentile than the Gentiles. That's what disgusts them. The only reason people come to Israel is for the holiness, for the story, for the Bible, for the chosen people. So all the secular Jews in Israel are missing the point. We're not supposed to go in that direction. We're supposed to build a temple. If we build a temple, that will bring so much 
secular tourism will be rich. You know, I don't know what makes you tick. We want peace in the world. We want blessing in the world. And if washing our hands, because the God said so in the Bible, saved us from the Black Plague and probably from the Corona as well, hopefully, um, you know, at least makes it a little easier. Kosher food and all that stuff that we've been keeping. You know, the Christians and the, and the Muslims are like our younger brothers. They're like, oh, uh, what, did, what did Pop say? He said, don't kill, don't steal, don't eat milk and meat together. Oh, sh that's a lot of stuff to take in. Well, let, let's start slowly, shall we? Let's. Okay, what's what's the whole Bible on one foot? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Good, we'll start there. And they've been at that for like the last thousand years, the Muslims and the Christians together. Hopefully they'll get more advanced and they'll start to keep Shabbos, uh, you know, Saturday instead of Sunday or Friday. <laughs> it's like Judaism pulled up Saturday. It says it in the Bible. And then the Christians are like, we can't, we can't park on Saturday, can we? No, 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 we're going to park on Sunday. And then, the, and, and then the Muslims are like, oh, double parking? But then they park on the other side, you know, Friday. Okay, we got all bases covered, you know. Well, no. Hope, I mean, I think that, you know, Christianity is not truth. It's not truth, you know. And Jordan Peterson, you know, has, has roots in Christianity. His Bible series is amazing. I like the ideas. But then when you see the questions start to roll out, they start saying, like, isn't spirituality beauty? And, you know, the, you know and they start mixing... What they're starting to do there is mix the Greek, you know, physique and the Roman naked statues, basically, and, and, and all the fancy churches in, in Europe, and beauty, and then and he says some things like, you know, there's nothing nicer than a building that's beautiful for the intellectual mind to flourish, you know, building can be very, you know, and beauty is definitely kind of, yeah, but that's not, It's not, you're not, yeah. And then the next question is basically the same thing. So basically, it's just diving right back into materialism. The whole point of religion is, or, or Judaism, is to go out of your, to become nothing. To become nothing. So that, that, that Once you get over your physical existence, you can start to meditate and actually go out of your box and go into the higher spheres. But, but, as he finishes his, his 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 speech, he goes to questions, and they just bring it back, boom, right into. And he like kind of agrees because his instinct is like, yeah, yeah, you know. I can't explain Judaism in five minutes. I can't. I can't do it. <clears throat> Maybe I'll make a master class one day. Let me know if you think I should make a master class. What's a Jew? But uh, basically. The Natura character have a point. And just like the whole body, you have different parts of the body that have different functions. You don't have to understand everything, but you have to know that everything has a purpose. You shouldn't be taking a knife and digging any part of your body out just because you don't know what it is. You know. And even if you know what it is, you, sh you just shouldn't, you know, just just, just leave it. The Natura character have a thing that they are busy with. And if they wouldn't do it, then all the Orthodox Jews would need to do it. Because it's a steady historical reminder to the Zionist never to go back to the roots of hatred, never to go back to the roots of genetics, never to go back to the roots of Pharaoh pouring the blood of innocent Jewish children into his bath in order to heal his rash. You know, just 300 babies a day. No, nothing, nothing big. So never to think that you're a god in human form and that you have the power or the authority to decide life and death. That's always what's important. Try to be successful. If you're very, very successful, you have a lot of wealth, think of a way to distribute it in a quiet way. You know, put it back in, into society without anybody noticing. And if you're working yourself to death, stop. You know, if you're acquiring a lot of money and this and that, just, just split up your business. Calm down. Enjoy your life. This coronavirus hopefully is helping everybody do that. Look at the things that are very important in life. Look at the family. Look at the backyard. Look at what you have. Work with what you have. Stop, stop jumping around like a kangaroo. Sit down, relax, understand, and also learn. 
Now's a very good time to catch up on history, on your roots and your ancestors. And uh, yeah, and there's one last thing I want to finish off because I don't make these videos very often. I just want to say that uh, there was a whole uh, situation with Label Droner and people wanted me to address that a little bit because I, I was a little bit harsh. They said, you know, the man just passed away. Why are you going down on him like that? Because I spoke about it a little bit. So I'm just going to say the point that I was trying to make without connecting it to him personally, okay? So I'm not even going to mention his name anymore right now. I'm just going to say the point I wanted to make. The point I wanted to make is that we as human beings need to remember always that we need to have sensitivity when we're dealing with sensitive things. And we need to put people that are sensitive in the positions that are sensitive. For example, if you want to vote a mayor into your town or you want to vote... Uh, I, I don't know, you want to be make someone in charge of something, make sure you bring sensitive people into places of leadership. Because the higher a person is, the more sensitive he needs to be to every little thing that's happening in that organization. And if the person's a brute, if the person's thick-skinned, not because it's his fault, but because that's his nature, so then don't put him in a, pl in a place or a position where he's going to use that brute nature and kill people or destroy people's lives or endanger other people so just you need to make sure that the leadership and the, and the people around the leadership are a very very high quality doesn't matter where you are in the world and if you feel like you have no control over your leadership then you have to move you have to go to a smaller place a smaller community where you have more control of your leadership you'd never want brutal harsh rash insensitive people running the show because if you do they will be insensitive and the damage will be you know in some and it won't be their fault because people that are insensitive they're just insensitive you can't explain this kind of stuff to anybody it takes a lifetime to explain this kind of stuff you have people that get it and you have people that don't get it there's an expression in yiddish a cup can minish the roof you cannot screw someone's head on once his head is off his head is off Sometimes you can't make someone sensitive. If there's a person that decided that his life is for sale and that his life is for sale to the highest bidder and he's going to be a corrupt politician and he swore allegiance to some corrupt deal, it's going to be very hard to get him back on the people's side. And if he does, they might kill him or they might do something to him. They might say, you know, you, we signed a contract four years of corruption. How dare you bail on us? So let's remember that. And that's my only point. My only point is... Be very careful, especially when you have people in a vulnerable situation that are sick and not feeling well or whatever it is or, or a vulnerable business or whatever you're doing. If it's very, very vulnerable, make sure you don't let anybody that's insensitive touch that area. And the same thing applies the other way around. If you feel that you're not very sensitive or that you're losing touch or you're losing the feel or you don't know how to manage something, whether it's the children or the wife or the family, then go to therapy and don't feel ashamed and go to get help because you sometimes need a new perspective. And if you can't put that ego away, there's nothing I can do to help you. The only thing I can do is recommend Hasidic philosophy. Other than that, I cannot help you. You need to be zero before you add the ones. You just need, you know, that's it. You got to be humble. There's nothing I can do. If you're not humble, if you're not ready to give up, if you're not ready to take a step back, if you're not ready to cut a limb and throw it, metaphorically speaking, then you can never be successful. You have to always be ready to move aside and let the wisdom in. If the cup is full to the top, there's nothing you can do to add more. God bless you, Melech. Hope you stay safe. Hope the government leaves us alone. Hope the government opens up the doors. The people are furious. They're at a boiling point. I hate the situation. And by the way, this is the last thing about Corona I want to say. The Rebbe was right, the Rebbe was right, the Rebbe was right. The Jewish leader, the Rebbe, said, I mean, I didn't even say, but the only vehicle he promoted was a mitzvah tank, which is basically an RV that goes around the place doing goodness and kindness. Today, I can feel the Rebbe's message more than ever. I mean, people that have an RV, if their laws in one state are messed up, they can just hop to another state where the laws are still normal. 
I mean, imagine if you have an RV in the United States right now. You're pretty much good to go. I, I mean, I, I think there's no more, there's no, there's no person or no group of people that are more free right now than the RV community. All the people that took a bus and they turned it into a car and all that stuff. I mean, good for them. You know, now they have free electricity, they have free water, they have it all worked out. They have their living space and they have the flexibility to be free. I mean, I think that that's amazing. And most of them have guns and stuff that make sure they're protected. You know, because it's you know you're you're traveling all the time. You gotta you gotta protect your family. There's no choice. I mean, I think that's amazing. And uh, and I think that that could also become a very political strong power. Imagine 400 RVs pulling into a pulling into Washington. You know making a statement or something you know that could be pretty crazy so i mean i think that that would be awesome and i think that that's a great direction that the rebbe put forth i'm stuck in israel i got married here my wife wanted me to stay here maybe one day i'll make it back to the states i don't know maybe i'll start a revolution here you never know man anyway i won't tell anyone what my plan is predict the unpredictable <laughs> ladies and gentlemen stay safe stay positive stay happy Always turn the Joker card. It's the best.